What's up motivators, Taryn here. If you have been thinking about training for a triathlon or starting to train, or you've trained for a long time and you hear all the jargon of improving your FTP or your VO2 max or your maximal aerobic velocity or getting your race pace dialed in, it tends to be really, really confusing. Fortunately, there is some science out there that has found what the best predictors of triathlon race performance are. We're going to go through that study that tells all of us what you should really actually be focusing on. Then we're gonna fill out this training plan a little bit here so you can understand how we take what the science is saying to us and actually apply it to a training plan that you can use. Hopefully you find this helpful. Stick around, let's do it. My name is Taryn Gazelle. In my late 20s, I was overweight, unfulfilled, and couldn't even run to the end of the block. Over the following 10 years, I lost 65 pounds racing triathlons, running races, cycling events, and world championships. But eventually, the suffer culture of endurance sports training caught up to me causing health issues and injuries. Now, my company Motive and I are on a mission to help people live more fulfilling lives by reaching endurance sports goals using healthy methods. We can all kill it on race day without killing our bodies. Let's do it. So I remember when I first started training for triathlons, I was really struggling with understanding, well, do I do these super high intensity intervals of 15 seconds or do I just run and ride low and slow like maybe Maffetone method might support? But then how do I actually get comfortable at race pace? What about hit intervals of two to four minutes? And then I started understanding about VO2 max and FTP and all of these things start getting into the realm of like everything is saying a different interval is best or that a different metric being FTP or sprint power or VO2 max is best. But how do I start coordinating all of these things? It was really hard for me to start wrapping my head around. First, we're gonna help you with that. We have an app that can help you with that, but this video is going to help explain that a little bit. I wanna show you one study that was done by somebody who we've had on the podcast that helps give you an indication of what you should really be focusing on to make sure that you have a good race outcome. This researcher, Paolo Puccinelli, who we had on the podcast, he did this study here that you can go and look up on your own at PubMed, and I'll save you all of the details, but the really big predictors of total race performance in a triathlon was maximal aerobic velocity. I'll explain that in a second. Triathlon experience, how many races you've done in the past, and percentage of lean body mass. Let's quickly explain those three things. I'll start with triathlon experience. That's something that you can control just by racing more. You get better at racing more. And then I want to talk about maximal aerobic velocity because this relates to the intervals that we talked about. Maximal aerobic velocity is how fast are you going at your VO2 max? Your VO2 max is the maximum amount of oxygen that you can process every single minute. It's like theoretically a very good indicator of what your top end is. How healthy is your aerobic system, your heart and lungs? Traditionally, VO2 max was thought to be the king, but it's not necessarily what your VO2 max is, it's how fast are you going at your VO2 max? And that requires different training than actual VO2 max training. But VO2 max training itself is still very important because VO2 max training is more similar to what you're experiencing on, on race day. So it's important to get comfortable at that VO2 max effort as opposed to just focusing on absolute top end speed. So let me go over to the whiteboard and I'll explain how we coordinate the two into a cohesive training plan. And then I'll come back to the third point, which is the percentage of lean mass and how it coordinates with the training plan that I'm about to give you. So let's start filling out this training plan here. I've just mocked out a very typical average kind of training week where we have Monday, a steady bike, Tuesday, an intense run, Wednesday, a main swim, Thursday, an intense bike, then followed by a strength session. Then Friday, we have a steady swim. Then Saturday, we have a main big bike followed by a brick run. And then Sunday, we have a main run. What we're going to focus on for the purposes of this maximal aerobic velocity discussion are the intervals. So we're gonna focus on the intense run, the intense bike, and then I will talk about the intervals that we do during the main bike and the main run. 
The intense run and the intense bike are where we are going to focus on maximal training velocity. And we are going to split the focus into two separate frames of time. The first time frame is the base training phase. For people, this is the off season and the base building season. And then the second phase is the plan phase. So this is when you actually get into a training plan. We're not just doing a training plan that is looking the same year round. It needs to be a little bit different between the two. In the base training phase, what we like to do is this is where we start doing intervals that are roughly about 15 seconds to 60 seconds. And the work to rest ratio is somewhere around one to four. And this is really, really uncommon for a lot of training plans because most triathlon training plans focus on intervals of about two to eight minutes long, that common VO2 max improving kind of interval. But as we've seen in that study, maximal aerobic velocity, the fastest speed that you can possibly go is really important. So during the base training phase, we do these 15 to 60 second intervals with about a one to four work to rest ratio. So it could be like 15 seconds really hard, 60 seconds rest, or 60 seconds really, really hard, four minutes rest. This is going to allow you to hit really peak efforts over and over and over because you have a really big rest. And because the work time frame is so short, you can hit it really hard and go to those maximal aerobic velocities. So this is key and this is really unique to our training plan because a lot of people, like I say, even if they're working with a coach, are just focusing on that two to eight minute kind of effort. When a training plan starts rolling around, so this is two to three months for a sprint training plan, all the way up to about six months for an Ironman training plan. This is where I do think that those traditional two to eight minute intervals are really important. So when we start getting into that training plan phase, that's when we start with roughly two minute intervals. And yes, we do build up to eight minute intervals. And as opposed to a one to four work to rest ratio, the ratio gets flipped roughly. Because the intensity is a little bit down, which is required because the interval is gonna be longer, we are focusing on keeping that heart rate nice and high and keeping the heart rate beating at a high level so that we can work on that VO2 max that is important for getting comfortable at race pace. So base training phase, we look at that maximal aerobic velocity kind of effort, recruiting all those neuromuscular firing patterns and all of the different muscle groups. And then we start refining that into being able to hold race efforts for longer. So this might be a series of intervals that are two minutes long with 30 seconds rest or eight minutes long with two minutes rest, roughly around there. And as you progress, you go from these 15 to 60 second intervals, then you start with two minutes and then gradually make the work interval longer and the rest interval shorter. So we're getting the best of both worlds, the maximal aerobic velocity, the FTP and the VO2 max over here. But how do we then translate that into being able to execute a race really well? Well, that's in these Saturday and Sunday workouts where in the base training phase, this is going to be very, very light year round. We just want to make sure that you are focusing on low intensity efforts, just low zone one, zone two, get out and ride for a comfortably long amount of time so that you can stay aerobically healthy and your endurance can stay nice and high. But when we get into the plan phase, we start to build from anywhere from as low as five minute intervals up to a two hour interval for Ironman athletes. And we're doing these longer and longer intervals of five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 30 minutes, 60 minutes, two hours, just slightly above our target race effort. And we're doing the same thing in the bike and the run. So we're getting this complete 360 degree fitness where our maximal aerobic velocity is really well structured in the intense run and the intense bike during the base training phase. We have the endurance and the metabolic flexibility being to burn carbohydrates and fat during the base training phase. 
Then come a training plan. We start refining that VO2 max with longer intervals of two to eight minutes and shorter rest periods. And then with the intervals in the plan phase, we're refining that ability to go for a long period of time at a fast effort level by doing longer and longer intervals. So with this, you're getting that complete 360 degree fitness where there isn't a stone left unturned. And it's not just haphazard of doing some short intervals and then some long intervals and then some VO2 max intervals, like where everything is building upon each other in a structured fashion. Now let's get back to that third aspect of predicting your race performance, which is body composition. And it does relate to this. So you've seen how we coordinate the really fast, super intense efforts to get this point number one maximal aerobic velocity faster and faster. But then we don't just focus on that by doing nothing but super high intensity interval training. We then build into the VO2 max effort so you're more comfortable at your race pace. We talked about triathlon experience. You really just need to race more. But what about this percentage of lean mass? Is that just about dieting and getting your body weight down, here's the bonus part of what I just showed you in that plan. Whereas most triathlon training plans really just focus on that two to eight minute interval kind of effort, this other article here that looked at a whole bunch of studies, this is called Sprint Interval Train Bird, 40% more fat, with an hit in 60% less time. It looked at a bunch of studies. Here's the big takeaway from what they looked at. The data show that sprint interval train led to a 40% higher reduction in body fat percentage than hit. Additionally, sit, the super intense intervals of those 15 to 60 second participants exercised for 61% less time than hit. So the takeaway here is that Remember the first study said that maximal aerobic velocity and lean mass were some of the most highly correlated measures of triathlon race performance. These sprint intervals have been more associated with a better reduction in lean body mass. So while all of the training plans out there are really just focused on those two to eight minute intervals, they're doing you a disservice because they're taking up more time and they're not getting you as prepared as they could be. I think that both types of intervals are very important. That's why in our training app, there's a link in the description below, try it for free for 14 days. And if you like it, stick around. It's far less costly than a one-on-one -on -one coach or in a lot of cases, even doing it yourself. And we like to think that it is as good as one-on-one -on -one coaching because we incorporate both those super high intense intervals and then build up to the VO2 max in the right times of the training season. So we're not ignoring either. If you wanna try that out, there's a link in the description below. If you found this helpful, hit the like button below. Later motivators.